he tried to present tribal history so that people understood tribal history so that they could interact with their own history and see how things worked and how things developed and why things were the way they worked. And so one of his goals was always to try to communicate that understanding of, you know, there's two cultures and, and they can live side by side and, and that can all work and, and, it, and it'll be beneficial to everyone. It's a mistake for people to view a culture and say, this is the way it was. Um, the Indian was as different as we are. We, as, we are as different as our thumbprint. And so to stereotype, that's what is the problem. You know, Pete began to understand some of the historical oppression of Native people and the atrocities that happened, you know, from the boarding school era to not being able to practice religious rites not being able to speak language. And, um, you know, again, through his collection and those relationships began to understand um, that there was a great divide in, in, a, in, a, in this area. Connecting modern people with a hidden and untold history of the land and native people of Minnesota was Pete Humphrey's life's work. His collection of research, cultural artifacts, and books hold space today in the Scone Family Conservatory, home to the Humphrey Center for American Indian Studies, on the campus of Central Lakes College in Brainerd, Minnesota. Yeah, I think he got his first artifact, or if you want to call him artifact, from uh, John Morrison, I believe it was a drum, a very personal drum, and maybe a few other things too. He became uh, fast friends with a, a man by the name of John Morrison. But John Morrison was a major influence on him. And John Morrison was the great-grandson of Alan Morrison, who was one of the early traders and people that lived at Crow Wing. My dad would sit at, at John Morrison's feet and, and just take notes. And um, so John became a, a, a very good friend of his. This was all Indian lands here. This was Indian territories going back uh, into the 1860s, and uh, Brainerd became about 1870, 71. So there was no such thing as European people living here. It was all Native American. And Pete, because John Morrison was a descendant and had lived, actually lived a part-time at, at uh, Crow Wing, Pete went to John and asked questions, you know, about what happened there and, and the people and and uh, what was life like and and he started getting the truth you know what what was life really was like pete humphrey was a lifelong resident of brainerd who in addition to a career in banking developed a deep interest in local history and the study of american indian cultures humphrey also taught anthropology at central lakes college and would enthusiastically speak to any group willing to learn more about Native customs, politics, and intercultural relations, always using artifacts to make connections and illustrate his talking points. This is a head protector. If the board were to fall from the mother, it would, uh, the board would land in such a way as to protect the child. This is a footboard, this is the headboard, and uh, uh, was lined uh, with, um, uh, usually rabbit or uh, deer uh, fur. The Humphrey Center collection includes many carefully curated artifacts and 3,000 volumes of research related to native language, history, and culture. Each artifact tells a story, and those stories are accessible to students, researchers, and community members seeking a greater understanding of our past, present, and context for the future. It's very significant in that, um, you know, an individual, uh, individuals, you know, Terry Scone family, the late Pete Humphrey family, Central Lakes College came together to collaborate to say that, um, you know, not only are the artifacts important, the collection of the library, the books, the 
newspaper articles, the historical writings are important, but it's about community collaboration to really lift up um, the history of, of, of Native peoples in this region and uh, some of the atrocities, um, uh, the incredible contributions of Native people, and to really provide a venue to educate and bring people together. Humphrey sought to understand the complex confluences of legacies embedded within Native traditions and so often misunderstood by people today. He nurtured connections with the Mill Acts and Red Lake Bands. His goal to build understanding and friendship between cultures is alive today at the Humphrey Center. As we continue to foster cultural education and further connection with Native communities.